ready for the camera problems to get sorted out. So I'm going to show you all about this beautiful Japanese hot hair brush. So that's how it's spelled, but in Australia and the Western world we often pronounce it hake, the hake brush. So it's a Japanese brush that's been bound very differently from what you might have seen with other brushes and it's got really soft, beautiful goat hair on the end of it. So I'm going to show you how you can do beautiful soft skies using this with watercolour. So have a look at this. I'm gonna, I've got my 300 DSM cotton rag watercolour paper taped down. So we learn all about this in the beginner's watercolour class. We're about to start a session now so there might be some students coming in. I'm going to just wet the paper first with this beautiful soft brush. Now one of the tricks with this brush is you mustn't ever grind the corner of the brush. This, this wooden corner is very sharp. You mustn't ever grind that into the paper. So we just have to keep the brush as vertical as we can so that you don't grind it in. That's the first thing that I learned, the first thing that I did wrong the first time I used a hake brush or a huck hair brush is I went in at an angle and I wondered what all these hard marks were that were happening in my paper. So I'm trying to paint a really beautiful soft sky. So I try and get the paper just damp and just looking across that I can see it's shiny but not cuddly. Hello, welcome. I'm just running a live demonstration. So come in and watch. Hello, welcome. Just running live here. The students are starting to arrive, so we're going to have a look and see how this works. So this is a free bonus demonstration. Oh, good. So come in and have a look. So I'm using some beautiful Diox purple. This is Dioxazine Purple. It's a gorgeous colour. It comes in different names with different brands. I'm using the gorgeous Rembrandt colour, which is called Blue Violet. But underneath it, the dye colour that's inside this paint is the Dioxazine Purple, which is the most beautiful, glorious purple colour. So I've got this lovely wet paper. Now I'm just going to start swooping in and getting some mad sort of marks and imagining I'm doing a sort of a stormy sky. And you can just paint, I'm painting in all sorts of different directions here. Paint all the way across the paper. And if you, there's a little hair that's coming in now, I'll just drag that one out and get it out. If you put, make it nice and dark around the edges, then it gets a bit of a vignette effect happening. So I'm talking about the vignette effect in my second book. The, um, Dimensions book. So in Foundations, we don't talk about it too much, but in the second book, the uh, Dimensions book, book two, I'm talking about vignetting and how you use that. So I'm just going to do a little vignette here. Now, when you first start painting a sky like this, a bit of a mad sky, if you do stripes, you can sort of make it look like there's clouds coming down across the sky a little bit if you want to. That can look really interesting. But it's the white space that's really important. And if you're willing to just leave it alone, so I'll just drop in a little bit of extra dark around here just to get some nice strong vignetting to pull the focus into the middle of the painting a bit more. Really nice strong pigment, this dioxazine. And I'm going to let it rest. Now, the thing that most beginners do wrong is they fiddle with it. So... The only issue that I can see there is there's a little hair that's landed on the paper. I'm just not going to worry about it. I'm just going to leave it alone. And it's a good idea to take up all the excess from around the outside of the painting. So I like using a tissue for that and just taking up this excess. Because if any of this puddles and runs back into your painting, then you risk getting cauliflowers in your painting. So can you see, I've just left this alone. The first few marks you make will look absolutely mad they look really crazy and you're so itching to go in and fix it and fix it and fix it that it's the worst thing you can do. So if you're willing to just leave it alone and let it do its magic on the paper, then you can get the most gorgeous effects on your background sky. So it could be a really stormy sort of sky and there's a little bit of a glint of light through these crazy dark storm clouds. But you can see it's already starting to soften all by itself. And that's the magic of watercolour if you're willing to let it do its magic. So if you just rest your brush down and don't touch it anymore, fold your arms, walk away, step away, 
then you can end up with the most gorgeous guys like these sort of ones. So these ones have been done in a similar technique, especially this one, using the huck hair brush. So I will show you, I'll post a photo of this one in underneath the post after it's had time to dry. It's a really good idea to let this dry naturally so you don't just immediately hit it with a hairdryer because that locks all the pigment into place. But if you let it just travel through the water and travel across the paper all by itself, it'll soften and soften and soften. Look at how soft this is getting now. And it's, it starts to look a little bit more like a sky and not like some mad woman's come on here and just made some crazy marks with a brush. So I think it's quite interesting this one. It's got a bit of a star formation in the middle here. But by the time it's all softened, I think that's going to look like a really interesting magical sky. So the trick here is to not grind the tip of the wood into the paper, change the direction all the time of how you're applying the brush strokes, do vignetting if you want to, and then just leave it the heck alone. Put the brush down and stop touching it and let it dry naturally. So I'll post you a photo of what that looks like dry and you will love it, I promise. So there you go. If you want any more free tips, make sure you visit dojo.genartarts.com. There's lots of free tips there. And otherwise, thanks for watching.